The green revolution is being built on a very dirty industry. Steel is critical in almost every single decarbonisation technology there is, be it wind turbines, solar panels or electricity pylons. The problem is, its production burns billions of tonnes of coal every year. In fact, the steel industry each year emits more CO2 than all the buses, cars and motorbikes on the planet. According to BNEF forecasts, to build enough wind turbines to reach net zero by 2050 would require one and a half billion tonnes of steel. That's enough to build over 42,000 Burj Khalifas. So what does that mean for the steel industry? It means it's going to have to decarbonize and fast. It's a huge task because the industry is currently dominated by coal-fired blast furnaces, which emit huge amounts of CO2. Steel makers are currently exploring two main ways of replacing these. The first is to substitute the coal with biomass and then trap the emissions it produces underground. ArcelorMittal, Europe's biggest steel maker, is one of the companies looking at doing this. It's an appealing option because it avoids having to do costly retrofits of all the existing blast furnaces. The problem is this solution isn't necessarily scalable. There simply isn't that much biomass around and a lot of other industries want it. For example, the aerospace for biofuel. Another option is replacing coal with green hydrogen, which when used to make steel will emit only water, making it in theory a greener option. It's also infinitely scalable. So long as you have enough electricity, you can make green hydrogen. One of the companies looking at doing this is SSAB. They're currently in the process of building plants that will run on hydrogen. The problem is using green hydrogen will require incredibly costly retrofits of all the steel plants. There also isn't that much of it today, simply because the industry almost doesn't exist yet to produce it. All ways of decarbonizing the steel industry involve massive costs and huge technical barriers. But there is some hope. Some of the world's biggest steel companies have now committed to reaching net zero emissions by 2050, including ArcelorMittal in Europe, Nippon Steel in Japan, and most importantly, the Chinese state-owned giant Baowu Steel. That's incredibly important because China produces over 50% of the world's steel. Unless China decarbonizes, all the efforts of Western steelmakers will be for almost nothing. One of the core issues with green steel is that it is fundamentally more expensive to make than polluting steel. That means that governments have to provide incentives to steelmakers to produce it. Finally, they're starting to do so. The EU Green Deal, set to be announced in July, is likely to contain measures to promote production of green steel. For example, tariffs on foreign polluting imports, as well as high carbon prices to make green steel production more viable. Without measures like these, the decarbonisation of the steel industry simply won't happen and there will be huge costs for the planet.